one of my recent videos, I delved into the career of Mike Bossy, somebody who I consider to be the greatest pure goal scorer the game of hockey has ever seen. Not only was he one of the greatest players of all time, but he had a groundbreaking debut season, shattering the rookie goal scoring record as he became the first player ever to notch 50 goals in a rookie season ending the year off with 53. In the years that followed, notable talents like Joe Newendike, Blair McDonald, and Marcel Dion would all take a stab at Bossy's achievement. However, none could quite reach his milestone, with each player coming respectively just a few goals shy. And although Wayno amassed 137 points in his inaugural season, he wasn't considered a rookie due to his prior 80 game stint in the WHA. So in 1981, the underrated stud Peter Stasny etched his name in the history books by setting a rookie points record with an outstanding 109 points in his debut season. So fast forward seven years to 1988, because in 1988 the landscape of hockey underwent a seismic shift. The highly anticipated draft that year introduced us to a handful of future stars and Hall of Famers, including Mike Medano, Trevor Linden, Jeremy Roenick, Rod Brendamore, Tony Amante, Mark Recchi, and I could keep going boys, but we'd be here all day. This was quite literally one of the best drafts the sport had ever seen. And Winnipeg was about to get something special with that 10th pick. The Jets were about to pick up one of the most beloved players the sport had ever seen. This young Finn stood out from the rest. And little did anybody know that this young kid would soon be a threat to Bossy's rookie goal record and Stasny's rookie point record. Boys, I'm rubbing my hands like bird, man. Getting ready to talk about this with you guys. We're turning our focus to the greatest rookie in NHL history. And I'm talking about the Finnish Flash, Teemu Salani, and his absolutely ridiculous rookie season. There's a reason they called Solani the Finnish Flash. Teemu was one of the fastest players in the world, somebody who revolutionized the way players play with his speed and finesse. Or to put things bluntly like Keith Kachuk said, there was speed, then there was Teemu Solani's speed. With all of these factors, along with his class, humility, and work ethic, he was an easy choice for the Winnipeg Jets when they selected him 10th overall in the 1988 draft. However, due to several factors such as mandatory military service, a broken leg, and his loyalty to play for Finland at the 1992 Olympics, we wouldn't see Teemu play in the NHL until 1993. But that wouldn't stop Solani from getting his name out there in the hockey world. Solani stayed back home and played in Finland's Liga. And by his early 20s, Solani already achieved rock star status in his home country. He was already a legend in Finland. From his Olympic play in 1992, his world junior performance in 1989, netting 72 goals in 86 games during his final two seasons in Finland, the legend of the Finnish Flash was just getting getting started. In the summer of 1992, Solani had reached the equivalent status of what we now term as a restricted free agent. Having been four years since his drafting by the Winnipeg Jets, he technically had the option to sign with any team, but the Jets would always retain the rights to match any offer. Can you imagine what the NHL would have looked like if in August of 1992, Tamu Solani signed with the Calgary Flames? Well, the Flames actually tried to sign Tamu for apparently one and a half million more than what the Jets had been offering. But given all the potential Solani had possessed, the Winnipeg Jets had no problem matching the offer. Thus, a young talent brimming with skill and charisma would embark on his NHL journey in Manitoba.
Tamu Solani himself reflected on his timing before entering the league in 93, stating, I think it was very important for me to come a little bit later. At the time, so many 18 year olds weren't ready to play right away. He recalled advice from his agent Don Baisley and Finnish hockey legend Yari Curry. And Curry himself emphasized the importance of being fully prepared before making his NHL debut. Solani highlighted how breaking his leg in 1989, which would sideline him for the entire year, would actually provide him with an additional opportunity to improve and refine his skills, and work on different areas of his game, just showing the type of character Winnipeg was about to get. A kid who turned a bad situation into a positive, and a kid who was determined to prove that he belonged. So now it was time for Solani's rookie year. On October 6, 1992, Tamu made his highly anticipated NHL debut. Despite not scoring his first goal in his first game, he did contribute with two assists in a 4-1 victory over the Red Wings. His debut would serve as a teaser for the excitement that would unfold in 1993. Two nights later, Solani found his name on the score sheet, putting up a beauty against the Sharks. And it would be in October, all of Northern Canada was about to experience the Flash. He started off his demolition tour through Canada by recording his first career hat trick against the Edmonton Oilers, and Solani would absolutely terrorize the Flames a few nights later, recording his first career five point game. If only the Flames offered him a couple more million. And by the time October came to an end, people were already dubbing Solani the rookie of the year, because through his first 12 games in the NHL, he accumulated an impressive impressive 11 goals and 9 assists in just 12 games. And I just feel like I need to mention that before the season commenced, there was a widespread consensus naming Eric Lindros the frontrunner for the Calder Trophy. But the ridiculous start to Solani's career quickly shifted everyone's perspective. He effortlessly garnered the attention and altered opinions. And after only 12 games, Solani was considered the runaway favorite for the Calder Trophy. This swift change really underscores the undeniable dominance he was displaying on the ice, taking all of the attention away from the former first overall draft pick. That's impressive, man. Ultimately finishing October with 20 points in 12 games. And with 72 games remaining in the season, we were just getting started, baby. In November, Solani would prove that he is just indeed a rookie, putting up only 6 goals and 5 assists in 11 games. But in December, he would quickly regain momentum, proving he was more of a superhuman than the Flash himself. Securing his second hat trick of the season, tallying a total of 11 goals and 8 assists in 14 games. So now, 37 games into Solani's pro career, he had 28 goals and 20 assists in 37 games. As the new year came around, January unveiled a new facet of the Finnish Flash's game, his playmaking abilities. Solani proved that he wasn't just a one-trick pony, and he was actually an incredible all-around player. Embarking on a remarkable 10-game point streak, and even more impressive, he registered multiple points in 8 of those 10 games, coinciding with a Jets run of 9-1-2 and two throughout January. By the end of January, he had amassed 12 goals and 15 assists in just 12 games, solidifying his lead in the Calder Trophy race. And let's be real, to most out there, he had pretty much already solidified his Calder Trophy win. However, the most thrilling part of Solani's rookie campaign was yet to unfold. Okay, so now at this point in 59 games, Solani had 40 goals, and it was obvious at this point that there was a new boss, and Solani would soon be the new rookie goal scoring king. By the conclusion of January, it was evident that it was merely a question of when, rather than if Solani would surpass both Bossy and Stastny's records. However, his momentum would take a deep hit throughout much of February, only finding the net five times times 
in the first eight games of the month. Predictably, the Jets would also struggle during this month, enduring a seven game winless streak and earning just one point over that span. And much like a lot of players in today's NHL, I'm sure Solani was hyped when he saw that the Ottawa Senators were coming to town. And it would be against the Sens where Solani would get back on track, putting up a goal and helping the Jets pick up a much needed win. And three nights later against the Canucks, Solani found himself within six goals of equaling Bossy's 15 year old record. As if it was somehow even possible, it would seem like these wins and performances seem to elevate his game to another level, achieving a historic milestone by becoming the third player in NHL history to score 50 goals as a rookie. His remarkable feat was highlighted by a stunning four goal performance against the Minnesota North Stars. Two nights later, with only three goals needed to set the record, the stage was set. Solani and the Jets faced off against the Quebec Nordiques. It was on this unforgettable night that Solani truly cemented his status as a hockey icon. Puts it behind the net to Steen. Steen to Solani. Out front it goes Shannon. Shot one. Here's Solani. He scores! He's tied the record. Skillfully flipping the puck over Quebec netminder Stefan Feist, Solani expressed his elation by tossing his glove into the air and mock shooting it into submission, making for one of the most iconic moments in NHL history, making Solani the new rookie goal scoring king. The pressure of chasing Bossy's record seemingly lifted, Solani not only continued to excel for the remainder of the season, but he also set a record that appeared virtually unreachable. Solani continued his incredible performance throughout the remainder of the season. In March alone, Solani would record an astonishing 20 goals in just 14 games. And on March 23rd, Solani scored his 110th point of the season against the, the Toronto line. Maple Leafs. Here's Zamna. He moves in with it. Zamna cuts in front. He is the first one. Rebound. And it's a goal. That's it. and he would record seven more multi-goal games that year. Adding to his impressive tally, he would score five goals and provide nine assists in just seven April contests, ultimately finishing tied with the Buffalo Sabres sharpshooter Alex McGillney for the league leading goals. 
By the time the season was over in April, Solani recorded 132 points, which is most likely another unbreakable record set by one of the greats. But even more impressive, he finished the season with 76 goals. A record that obviously still stands today, and let's be real, unless we get the next Wayne Gretzky, this record is probably gonna remain Solani's until the end of time. And sadly, the magical season wouldn't continue much longer into the playoffs, as Winnipeg would be eliminated in six games by the Canucks. Solani would put up four goals in those six games, putting an end to the most dominant rookie season we will ever see in the game of hockey. And Solani earned all 50 first place votes on his route to the Calder Trophy, outdistancing Boston's left winger, Joe Janot. Reflecting on his remarkable rookie campaign, Solani expressed what a great memory that whole year was and how the people of Winnipeg really lived it with him. And all the experiences he shared with the fans and the team were something he would never forget. I mean, buddy, how can you forget that? You were the greatest rookie the sport had ever seen, my guy. Such a humble guy. This incredible debut was just the beginning of one of the best careers the sport had ever seen, really. Solani would lead the NHL in goals three different times. He would be a four-time All-Star, clinch the Stanley Cup with the Ducks in 07, finished his career scoring 684 goals, placing him 11th on the all-time list, and finishing up with 1,450. 57 points. He would also finish his career with the most points in Olympic Games history. He was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. Boys, let me know if you want me to do a deep dive on Solani's entire career one day. If enough people want to see it, I would definitely love to make it. Solani was one of my favorites. And it's crazy to think that Solani's resume would be just as impressive even without his extraordinary rookie season. And when it's all said and done, I don't think we're ever going to see a rookie season more dominant than Teemu Solani's 1993 season. And thank you guys so much for supporting the channel recently. I love each and every one of you guys that decide to watch and tune in. You really keep the channel going and keep me motivated to keep making videos like this. So thank you boys and I'll see you in the next one.